All right, everybody, welcome to our February Grand River Word Turners Guild meeting. Um, uh, let's see, we want to we wanna welcome everybody. Any new people? Uh, I didn't see any new people here today. Do we have any new members? We have a new member. Can you tell us about yourself or how long you've been wood turning, things like that, or not? Okay. All right. All right, good. Good. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, welcome to the, the wild world of wood turning. <laughs> we call it the WWW. <laughs> this is one of their events. Um, if you uh, if you're interested in becoming a member, our, our membership, our dues for 2024, thirty five dollars. Um, our membership person is Gary standing in the back of the room there with his hand up. So if you're interested in becoming a member, um, see Gary. If you uh, are a member and you don't have your name tag, see Gary. Um, if you are a member in, or even if you're not a member, once we have your email, you should be on our email list and be getting our newsletter. Hopefully everybody got our newsletter this month. Um, if you're not getting your newsletter, see Gary. Um, or make sure that his email is not going to your junk folder. It comes under Cynthia Humphreys. So that's, what, that's where it's coming from now. Um, it typically should have you know, GRWG in the, in the title so you recognize that it's from us. Um, we also have... Um, some other things available to our wood turners. We have a complete library in the room back there when you came in. It's on your right. We have a bunch of DVDs, a bunch of books that you can check out. We have a turning station back there if you want to sharpen your tools. Um, if you're unfamiliar with our turning system, we have a Wolverine up there. Um, I, I've done we'd be happy to, uh, we need to hit the mute all button on that. Um, uh, there would be. Um, Doug, you need to unmute yourself. Um, Doug, you're still muted. <laughs> oh, I'm you're muted. Good. You need you're good. To you're good me. now. You're you're good. Are we good? Okay. Um, we also have mentors around the area. They're listed on our newsletter. If you're having a problem or you just want to come and hang out in somebody else's shop for a couple hours. They're, they're, they're listed. They're, we're always happy to have somebody come out and hang out and you know, see what we're doing. And we can help them on stuff or um, they can help me on stuff. I don't care. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're always happy to have somebody come to our shop and hang out for a while. So that's everything for members. Um, moving on down the list. Um, let's see, February, this month's demonstration is bull from a board. Pete's going to do it. You see some of the examples on the table. Everybody brought him in. He's going to show you how, how that is done. It's kind of a cool, kind of cool way to make a bowl. Um, and uh, you can, you know, you can use flatwood to do it instead of a, a tree. Um, next month, we have Jeff Heidela is going to do a uh, natural edge bowl. So we're looking forward to that. Um, and April is still to be announced, but we should, hopefully by next month, we'll know what April is going to be. So we can tell you what, what Tom Hale is going to do for us. Um, see, moving on down the list, um, I had a, a problem with my lathe a couple, three weeks ago. My inverter, like this, went out exactly like that. If, if your inverter burns out on your lathe, you're going to have a really bad day. <laughs> Get a hold of me. I can help you through that process. Because as of two weeks ago, when I called Powermatic, they were not much help. Parts are not available um, because it's obsolete. You know, my, my lathe's a 3520B, but I think if you had a 3520C that was first run, it has the same inverter on it, and it's also obsolete. And they have a replacement inverter that, um, you know, they have it listed on their site for like $900 or something crazy, and it's not available either. So I, got, I found an update through Delta. Delta made this one. They do have an update for it. Um, it's programming it that is what is the big struggle because uh, um, they, they don't program them, they just build them. Powermatic is like, well, we don't, that's not in our list of, of inverters, so they, they're not much help either. Although I've, I've seen on AAW forum, somebody else posted, yeah, I, I just called Powermatic and they sent it to me. 
I called Power Medic and they said they didn't, wasn't available. So anyways, I have all that. So if anybody has a problem with that, contact me. I can help you out. George. No. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they all they all do the same thing. You can get a cheap one on uh, some of the guys are posted you can get a cheap Japanese or Chinese one on Amazon for like 120 bucks. And they had all the all the parameters, how the program and everything um, but when I went to, I looked at it it was from China. China, the reviews were bad. Um, the time for me to get it was like three weeks, you know, and I'm, I'm an addicted wood turner. I can't wait three weeks to turn. <laughs> so, yeah, so, uh, so I ended up going through Delta, which was not the cheapest model, but at least it's, it was locally and they had it in stock. I think it was 295 And then later I saw somebody had it for 249 So you can get those reasonably. So, so anyways, if you have an issue with that, let me know. I can I can help you through that process. Uh, yeah. 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 That's what George is saying. You know, the, you, when you order those, they're you, you don't want to get one that's too big that won't mount on your lathe. I bought the replacement one for this, and it actually had a smaller footprint. I had to. I had to finagle a bracket to get it onto my lathe. But uh, yeah, they make them for different sizes. You buy it by the size of your motor. So like for uh, this one, this is a horse and a half, I believe, three-phase, so you would buy one for that. You know, if you have a Powermatic, it's a two-horse, three-phase. If you've got a Robust and it burns out, I'm sure Robust has a replacement, but that's a three-horse, three-phase. So you buy it for the motor, and then you get it programmed in there. Um, so anyways, that's that. Moving on. Um, Fred Bivens is here, and uh, he wants to talk about Festival of the Arts. If you come up here, Fred, and talk into this mic, that would be perfect. Great. Some of you know me. Um, others of you don't. I'm, I am a member of the Wood Turners Guild. You don't see me very often, usually at least once a year, though. When, uh, He's muted. We can't hear him. Hey, he just needs to be now? closer to the mic. I'll, do, I'll get it. Go ahead. Go ahead, Fred. Can you hear me now? I'll get it. Keep talking. All right. Uh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes. You got it? Got it out there in uh, Zoom land? They got it. All right. My name is Fred Bivens. Um, I'm a wood turner, and I've been very oh, active in Festival of the Arts in Grand Rapids for, oh, geez, almost 50 years now. No, over 50 years now. Um, anyway... Last year I didn't come until March, so I'm a month early now. But I had a lot of um, a lot of computer uh, glitches that I had to get taken care of on the entry form before I could uh, get it online last year. But this year it's all working fine. We went live on uh, February 1st. Um, the Festival of the Arts in Grand Rapids Regional Arts Competition and Exhibition is open to any artists that live in, and this is important because I know some of you don't live in these counties. It's an eight county area. It's Elegant, Kent, Ottawa, Barrie, Ionia, Montcalm, Muskegon, Nuego, or Ottawa County. Um, that's our charter. We can't, we can't go beyond that. We can't accept entries. And we apologize. We'd really like to get you guys that live down by Kalamazoo and to be able to to enter this, but um, but David is very happy that more people don't enter it because it gives him a better opportunity. So. Actually, I actually was going to encourage people to get in. I know, yeah. I know. So, yeah, it it is. Um, the drop off deadlines, and I have these. Anybody, I printed off thirty of these. So if you want one of these, pick it up. Uh, Drop-off will be April 25th, 26th, and 27th on um, Alpine Avenue, 1765 Alpine Avenue Northwest at John S. Hyatt and Associates. It's a warehouse. Um, it's the same place we took it in last year. But the big news this year is that we're going to have all of the art 
in one gallery space. And it's a big one, and we're going to be in the skywalk between Amway and DeVos Place, including the, the overhead of the lobby of DeVos Place. So we'll have room for a lot of work. However, if a lot of you guys enter, we might have to come up with more pedestals to put stuff on, But because I've got quite a few. But um, anyway, the jurying will be done um, right after uh, the entries close, oh, well, the next day, and then we'll notify artists by midnight on April 29th, and then the pickup of non-accepted work will be that following weekend. But that'll all come in via email. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I, I want to stress is that we strive to get a lot of award money. In fact, the Woodturners Guild is going to again sponsor the Ron Denbroder Memorial Award for $200. Last year we gave out over $13,000 in awards. So it's really beneficial to a lot of people. Um, our, our entry fees haven't changed in eh, it's probably 15 years or more. We've had the same entry fees, 25 for one, 40 for two and 50 for three. So it's 25, 15, and 10 as you go down. Um, a lot of places are much higher than that. And when we sell something, and that's one of our goals is to sell your work, we only take a 25% commission. Um, so we're, we're trying, I'm a wood turner myself. I've sold stuff through festival. I like to make that opportunity available to people that don't need to get into a 50% relationship with a gallery. So um, <clears throat> applications are online. And don't let this long URL on here scare you. Um, you can just go to the festivalgr.org website and then go through participate, and it'll get you right to where you need to go to click on the the entry form. If you have any trouble, um, you can always call me. There's a, a phone number in there, um, and uh, we can work you through it. Or you can send a note to um, RAE at festivalgr.org, and we'll help you out. Um, you can start it and stop it, but you have to sign up for that to begin with. You have to create a password at the very beginning. But so if you don't know, um, you don't have to. You don't have to do that, but you can. Also, we do encourage you to enter photographs. Um, but even if you don't, we will take pictures when it comes in because that's the way we sell the art. We put a QR code on every label for the art. And then when people scan that QR code, it takes them right to the festival website, right to your piece. And they can go there, put in their credit card, and, and buy your art. So that's what I have on, um, on regional arts. Again, we're going to have a lot of awards. We're in the process. And if you would be interested in sponsoring an award, we have a lot of memorial awards. When my daughter died, we set up a fund and we raised a lot of money and we put up an award, which is a $1,000 award every year. That's the biggest award, but she was a great girl. So anyway, um, if you are interested in sponsoring an award, talk to me or go on the, the site and send an email to me. And um, we'll get you. We'll get you set up. And if you sponsor an award, you can go in and select what piece that award goes to. So if you like Dave, you can put up an award, and you can give Dave your award. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you could. Um, okay, so uh, I can I can hand these out if anybody wants them. Oh, okay. I'll put them out at the, the table out there. All right. So grab them when you get your coffee or whatever. Um, the other thing that I'm in charge of with festival, or one of the other things, is 
the demonstrations tent. I'm going to do that again this this year, and Dave did it last year, and uh, uh, who else did it? Tom, Tom, uh, yeah, Tom Sampson has done it. Uh, um, too many times here. Penning has done it. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, I give you a, uh, just nominally short of a, of an hour's time. Uh, you guys will have to bring the lathe down again, but. So uh, we'll have a space for it, and uh, I'm in charge, so you can be sure you'll get scheduled in. So, <laughs> so um, I want to promote wood turning as, as much as I can. Um, even though I don't come to the meetings all the time, I do a lot of wood turning. So with that, are there any questions about festival or entering it? All right. Thank you. Okay, um, the, um, I do have a treasurer's report. Right now our, our treasury balance is $14,562.35. So if anybody has any questions about that, just let us know and we'll answer them um, promptly. Um, moving on down the list, um, if for people who are doing shows, if you're, if you're doing like an art show somewhere and you need a pop-up tent, um, we have... Um, one of them, we have a 10 by 10, we have a 20 by 20, or 10 by 20, um, and we know other people in the guild that do have these tents. Um, there's a calendar, um, Tom Penninga, our equipment person, has a calendar where he rents out our stuff. It, and doesn't rent it out, it's free for members. You just gotta get, you just gotta get with him and say, hey, I wanna use a 10 by 10 tent this weekend. You know, and he'll put you down. Um, if it's not a weekend of our meeting, you can get tables, you can get shelving. We have all that back there. So um, that's, you need to see Tom Penninga if you want to use a tent for a show. Um, we built a new Facebook group, not a page, for, um, for our group that um, everybody can post to. With a page, it was a business page, and it does not allow anybody except administrators and moderators to post. And I've got a lot of crackling going on here suddenly. Let me move it. I got it. So uh, anyways, we built a new Grand Rapids, R Grand Rivers Guild group. So um, if you can find that group, everybody can post to it. And that's what we're looking for is everybody to be able to post onto this page and post things they're working on, work in progress, things you finish, you know, like, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to get more people involved with this Facebook page. And that's where we're going to also be posting like our videos now. I won't be posting them to the old page. I'll be posting them to the new page of videos of these meetings and our demonstrations. So look for that if you're on Facebook. Uh, we set invites out to a lot of people. You, you should have seen an invite to, to check out the new page. Um, okay, moving on down the list. Um, just a little, little breaking news here. Um, this will be our last meeting at this facility. Starting next month, our meetings are going to be at the Woodcraft building on East Beltline, just south of 28th Street. Um, we'll be moving in a couple of weeks. Um, uh, this place is for sale. That's why we made that choice. If you see the for sale sign out there, and if you've seen what they've done to all the other buildings around here that they sold, they raise them to the ground. They build new government buildings. So we're afraid that's going to happen, and we'll get booted out. So we, uh, we have found a new location. We'll be at Woodcraft starting next month. And uh, we'll put that in our newsletter. We'll send another notice out like before so everybody knows where to go next month. Um, this afternoon, um, Pete Vandermeer is, is going to be at Woodcraft. They've given us a space to keep our stuff in that we need to secure. And uh, he's got the materials where we're just going to put up some fencing around and some doors. And he could use maybe two people to help him do this this afternoon at Woodcraft. Um, if you are available and can help him do this, see Pete on the break and let him know, and uh, he'll probably take the first two people that say I can help. <laughs> um, and then in another couple of weeks, we'll be moving all of our stuff from here to there, and uh, we will probably take as much help as we can get to do that. And uh, we might even um, take a, uh, like a covered trailer in case it's a rainy day, and we've got to haul... TVs and stuff, 
Um, you know, so if you had a covered trailer, we, we, we would, might be able to use that if it's a rainy day. Otherwise, we do have a big trailer that we can think we can get most of our stuff in and do it in one trip between a trailer and a couple trucks. So that'll be coming up in a week. We will post something when we know when we're going to do that. Uh, first thing we have to do is secure our place to put the stuff that Pete's going to do today. And once, once we get that all done and secured and we're happy with it, then we will post something that this is our moving day. So we'll be moving out of here. And uh, from here on out, we'll be at Woodcraft until further notice. So any questions about that? No. At Woodcraft, no, it's, they're not going to charge us rent. So the only, only expense we'll have there is, uh, they, is internet. We, um, we're working on, uh, you know, we, we have a member with a hotspot that we think is going to work for us. Um, but uh, uh, our other choice would be um, if there's, there's an Xfinity hotspot there, that any in Xfinity user, if you have Xfinity Comcast in your house, you can log into this hotspot. And uh, so if you are an Xfinity customer, we might want to talk to you. <laughs> and let's see if you can let us use your password and login for, our, for just our computer here so that when we do meetings, we can still do our Zoom meetings live, you know. So, um, so that's, our, that's the issues we have. Dave. Um, yes, we, yeah, will, will this change um, us being selling supplies? Yes, we will no longer be able to sell supplies because it's a direct conflict of interest. So right now our supplies are like reduced. Some of them are on the raffle table. If they're out there, um, I think we're, we're going half price. We, we need to move these as of next month. We won't be able to set up a supply table. So if you're interested in anything on the table out there, um, I don't know if things are marked, but ask Roger. Roger's dealing. Roger's going to make a deal. We've got to move it out, otherwise we have to move it, you know, so we have to get rid of it. So uh, the next place we go, we have a lot of, we have limited space, so uh, we, we need to uh, get rid of a lot of the crap in our back room. So. Would it be in the warehouse? Yes, in the back. So there's a lot of space. Ken? The start time will be 9.30. The doors open at 9.00. So we, we can't get in there before they open. So the doors will open at 9. The meeting will start at 9.30. And somehow we're going to get our coffee pot on a timer. <laughs> so, so that it starts running at 8.30. <laughs> and is there and hot and ready to go at 9 when we open the doors. <laughs> so, yeah. That's the most important thing I'm working on. <laughs> so, yeah. So that starts next month. Steve. Broadmoor, yeah, I'm. So, yeah, yeah, it's Broadmoor, just south of 28th Street, right across from Lowell's, next to Repcolite. So if you go to Repcolite and get your uh, lacquer, and do it all in one shot. Yeah, there's a lot of parking out back. There's a lot of parking. Yeah. No, you have to walk in the front doors. They want everybody to come in, in and out through the front doors. So, yes? Well, he's confident that it's not going to sell <laughs> and that he will still be here and all that. I, I don't know what's going to happen. If they do sell it, he's, I, I've, hear, I've heard conflict, conflicting stories on what he's going to do. So... Yeah, so I, I don't know what he's going to do with all the wood here. If it sells, you might want to just keep an eye on that. So, do we have another question in the back? Did you have a question? Oh, yeah. You make the mention everybody should know where Woodcraft's at. We probably all have been there once. So, so that's, uh, that's next month. So, if you have any questions or concerns, get a hold of us. You know, we'll, we'll be happy to answer them. Okay, I think now we're going to do show and tell. So uh, if you're online you want to do show and tell, um, click on your reactions button and, uh, and raise your hand. Or just stand there and wave your hand. Maybe Dave will see you. I don't know what screen he has on if he can see everybody. So, um, and then we'll start here. Grab your piece. Pull, come up here and uh, tell us your name and tell us about your piece. 
and uh, we'll go from there. My name is Dave Curley. I uh, posted uh, just uh, some text on the Facebook page this week about Catalpa and how much I hate it. So, but, um, so this is a piece of Catalpa. I'll put it back down. A lot of tear out. Um, I was kind of rushing through this. This was fairly dry. This is very light wood. It's almost like, uh, it reminds me a lot of sassafras. Um, but I'm still going to pursue the finishing of this bowl because I, can you see the grain there? The way the grain, the way the grain is um, <clears throat> moving around. Um, I think what a, What I'll be doing, I think, is uh, uh, sandblasting this, or maybe even carving some of this out so that I pronounce the, the grain. I just like the way, you know, the grain ended up. It's kind of interesting, too, the, this being a log, <clears throat> how, um, how the, the pattern of the grain sort of turned around like this. There must have been something here, but uh, I don't know. Anyway, that's, that's what I brought in. It's more of a problem than... A problem-solving piece than a than a finished piece. It is. If you want to hang on, just pick it up when you when you see it. They're talking about how light the wood is and that it is catalpa for people online. That no longer part of that conversation. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gary Humphreys. I'm the membership person if you need to see me for paying dues, etc. I'm still in the early phase of my career and I'm still experimenting with planned rims and also experimenting with shapes of bowls. A brother-in-law provided me with the uh, segments of a cherry tree that he cut down and so these are a couple experiments with different than the just traditional shape of a bowl. This one is a maple tree that came down in the neighborhood. And then this one is tongue in cheek. It got a crack in it after I was done and I didn't want to throw it away. So it, it's one way to camouflage a crack. You can't see it anymore. I put a, I painted a gecko on it. So. I'm Ken. Uh, this was something that I did after the last time we did this de demo many, many years ago. And I prepped a piece and forgot how I was supposed to do it. So I'm looking forward to the demo. <laughs> okay. I'm Ray Laninga. Um, I've, I've experimented with several kinds of uh, wood. Uh, free works real well. Uh, this, this piece was mostly free. It has a um, uh, poplar back, but otherwise it's LVL. Uh, let's see, what's that? Laminated veneer lumber. It's mostly used for structure. So it's basically thick plywood. And uh, I decided to make an Easter bowl. It's kind of rough, but it's the best you can do with that material. This is my first attempt with my new loot or lathe. It's walnut, still needs some sanding for getting the uh, uh, tooling marks out, but I was pleased with my first attempt. So. You got some Billy Club? Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> well, I have grandchildren. <laughs> hey, good morning, everybody. I'm Colleen. Um, I uh, tried to dish. Um, I got some free um, oak from a coworker, so I turned a square little dish and left it on the counter in my kitchen when I went back. 
um, it was cracked. I was like, oh, I just left it there for a few days, and then I saw online somebody um, who did the thing with the burning, and I can't remember the name of it. But uh, it, they said if it's green wood, it'll probably crack. And I thought, great, I've already got a crack in it, so it doesn't bother me <laughs> if it gets ruined. Um, but I, I really like how it turned out. And scrubbed off the loose um, ash and then just put some mineral oil on it. It's, uh, it was fun. Thanks. Some of you may... Some of you may have seen these before. Uh, I did them a while back, but these are both boards, boards from or bowls from a board. And the hardest part of the whole thing is making the board. <laughs> so that's <clears throat> this is just one dovetail, although it looks like it's more. And this here is just a combination of different pieces wood glued together and then cut out <clears throat> and if you're gonna sand anything that's got the black wood or, or ebony or something like that on it make sure you use a sanding sealer before you sand it otherwise you'll have to make another cut across it <laughs> yeah and the black smears <laughs> I'm Daryl. <laughs> no, I just I can't leave firewood alone. Sometimes it doesn't. You know, you get to looking at a little piece and uh, wonder what's in it, and that's what these are. They're just before I came this morning, I looked at one table in my shop, and there were I don't know, well over a dozen of these laying around. These are just a couple that I finished up yesterday. I do not know why this one's paper thin on one side. I believe it must have warped while it was on the lathe. Hi, I'm Jim. Um, I just started making cremation urns, and I got a couple in a couple local funeral homes. And I made the tops. There's a place on uh, Clyde Park that sells, they do engraving, and they sell a basic four inch piece of stone and they'll etch them for you. So I made them so they can just glue that on. And uh, you can just take the bottom off to fill. And uh, let me show you real quick. <laughs> it's, a, it's a shower ring from a hardware store cost three dollars so it was pretty cheap to make <laughs> oh. there you go. I'm Jim Vanderwood from Holland Michigan um, I couldn't think of a bowl that I wanted to make so just as a fallback thing I gonna make a uh, cutting board and this is what I ended up with. It's, uh, it was a lot of fun to do. It wasn't that easy. Those uh, angles have to be exact or you're going to do a lot of infill. So that's what I ended up with. Thank you. I'm Pete Vandermeer and uh, this started out as a piece of a really curly black walnut about that by that it was going to be a vase and it had a lot of checks in it and it got smaller and smaller and smaller and eventually I decided Doug had done these ring things and I thought I've never done one of those so I bent a piece of, uh, of an old uh, 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 screwdriver ground it on down to make my cutter and so I actually did a a ring. It was fun. Nice. I, I got a couple of pieces of uh, red cedar. Um, this one I got off the Kalamazoo 
Woodturners Guild, their uh, raffle table. And uh, so and, and it sat in my garage. And then about the same time, uh, a guy from my church asked me, do you ever turn red cedar? And I'm like, no, I haven't. And so he dropped me off of three or four pieces in my driveway a couple of days later. So this is when he dropped off this vase. Um, I was really happy the way it came out. It's super soft, so it's easy to sand. Um, you know, you, you t because it's soft, you tend to get tear out, but it, it sands out so fast. So um, it's, it's pretty easy to work with. Um, um, I did lacquer finish on these. Um, the sad part is everybody's telling me this red's not going to last. So um, it's going to fade just like, uh, just like it does on your cedar chest. You know, so with box elder, if you keep it out of the sunlight, it'll keep that red a long time. But, you know, you look at the inside of a cedar chest, and there's, there's no red left, and it never saw daylight. So <laughs> it's going to fade. So, uh, oh, it's still, it's been like two weeks since I finished sanding these, and I turn on my dust collector, and it, the aroma of red cedar goes through my shop immediately. <laughs> I think that we're going to go online now. Um, I see Ruby has her hand up, so let's, uh, um, there we go, you got it. You're on, Ruby. Okay, one thing I wanted to bring to your attention were some new uh, abrasive grits that are on the market. This is the uh, superior grit. There's the regular and the microfine. And I found that... Um, if you sand to about 300 and then use these, especially on uh, acrylics or something, you get a very, very uh, nice, smooth finish with them. Then I came into possession of some uh, um, walnut. So this is a small walnut bowl, about 9 inches in diameter. And it had a lot of chatoyance in it. I think you can see the quilting in it. And then I came into possession of this piece. And it's a little over 20 inches in diameter. And the thing that bothered me about it was uh, because of its size, after I finished turning it, it was, it was quite smooth. But as it sat around, you can see it's developed a few little ripples in the wood. But uh, turning something that large was a bit of a challenge. So that's about all. All right, anyone else online? I don't see anyone. Looks like we're clear, Doug. Okay. Um, we are going to take a, a quick 10-minute break, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be right back for our demonstration, A Bowl from the Board. Thank you. Thank you. 